All right, we're at the final step of how to solve a Rubik's Cube. All we have left now are these middle edge pieces here. This one happens to be in place already. When you get to the final step, there are a few situations you can encounter. You may find that one of the edge pieces is already correctly in place. You may find that none of them is in place. Okay? Or you may find that all of them are in place. One situation you will not find is that like two of them need to be switched but two are correct. If that's the case what's happened is somebody has taken your cube apart and put it back together wrong because that doesn't happen. What can happen is either one of them will be correct, all of them will be correct, or none of them will be correct. But you won't find a situation where two of them are, or where, okay, obviously there couldn't be a situation, well, supposing you had three of them and then one piece turned or something. That means that your cube fell apart and somebody put it back together wrong. Okay, this is a typical scenario. You've got one of them is correct, and the other three need to be switched around. And what we're going to learn how to do now is the sequence that will shuffle those three pieces until they are located correctly. And I, we're going to learn the algorithm for that right now. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what the algorithm specifically does. I'll just say that it shuffles the pieces around, okay? And you apply the algorithm as many times as necessary to solve the cube. Okay, it's as simple as that. Let's learn what the algorithm is and then we'll learn how to apply it. <coughs> so here I've written it down. Once again, this is Rubik's Cube notation. If, you're, if you really want to learn it, uh, you can look it up. Uh, some look it up on a site on the internet or something. I'm going to just describe a few aspects of it important things. The Z here means turning the cube this way. Okay, So this is Z prime. Z prime means we're going to turn the whole cube on its side like this. Uh, there are a few different ways of applying this algorithm. I've seen several different ways of doing it. And I believe that the fastest way to perform it, as well as the fastest way to learn it, is with the cube turned on its side like this. And so. Uh, that's how I'm going to teach it, and it's really quick and really easy to learn. So it's Z prime, which is to turn the cube sideways. Then it's U L prime, U L U L, U L prime, U prime L prime, U two, and then you finish by doing Z, which is turning it back up again. Okay? So I'll demonstrate how to perform that right now. Okay? So <coughs> you turn the cube on its side. That's Z prime. So let's tra start again. Z prime. Then it's U L prime, U L, U L, U L prime, U prime L prime, U two. And in this case, it solved it. <coughs> that was all that was necessary to shuffle those pieces into their correct spots. That's not always going to be the case, though. So uh, I'll set up the cube in a way that, that is different from how we just had it. Okay. In this case, none of the side pieces is correct. You can see that not a single one of them is matched up correctly. Okay. What do we do in this situation? We're going to do the same exact algorithm, only we're going to have to apply it more than once. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do the algorithm and see how it works out. Z prime, U L prime, U L, U L, U L prime, U prime, L prime, U two, Z. Now we're going to look at it and see, sure enough, by shuffling them around like that, one of them is now solved or correct, correctly located, and the three remaining ones now we'll have to solve them by doing the algorithm one more time or possibly two more times, however many is necessary, okay? So let's do that. Let's do it again. Z prime, U L prime, U L, U L, U L prime, U prime, L prime, U two, Z. And there it is solved, okay? Uh, 
so that's that's all you do with this algorithm okay you you <coughs> if uh, if you have one that's solved you put it on the back you do the algorithm you do as many times as you need to if none of them are if none of the pieces is in its, is correctly located you just do the algorithm one of them after that will be solved you put that one to the back whichever one that is and you do it again okay we'll do it one more time I'm going to do a slightly different situation okay you may not know by looking at it but this is a slightly different problem still none of them is solved you don't need to know in what way specifically it's different from the previous scenario just take my word for it it is we're going to we're going to just solve it the way i'm suggesting for this video which is to use this algorithm so here we go uh, none of them is solved so it doesn't matter how we orient the cube and we're going to take it from here so z prime u l prime u l u l u l prime u prime l prime u2 z okay and as we look at it now one of them is solved we're going to put that one to the back and we'll do it again z prime u l prime u l u l u l prime u prime l prime u2 z and we're done okay so that's it um, <clears throat> it is possible actually we'll do one more it is possible to have it so that one of them is solved and the other three are messed up and in the course of doing uh, the algorithm they still aren't solved and you have to do it one more time so that's another possible scenario let's go ahead and do that now so we turn it on its well, I'll just start from the beginning so Z prime U L prime U L U L U L prime U prime L prime U two Z and you can see it's still not solved that's not the end of the world as long as the cube is looks pretty much like it did we know we've made some progress as long as these edges aren't messed up we know we didn't apply the algorithm incorrectly we'll just do it again here we go Z prime U L prime U L U L U L prime U prime L prime U two Z and there it is that is step eight and we have now learned how to solve the Rubik's Cube